It's a 60% snare and a fit. That's an AOE. I feel like you're going to, that's nuts. That could make you viable over, like, usually, you know, we've been seeing Demon Hunter tanks just constantly, but you having an AOE sharpened blade could actually give you really good team fight potential. Crazy team, like, Prot Warrior might be back, honestly, when it comes to PvP. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video, and in this one, we're going to be covering some tank action now with rated solo queue battlegrounds tank specializations are likely going to have a more critical and impactful role in pvp scenarios as well as in pve you're pretty much going to automatically always get into a group at any time and i do believe that there is some gear overlap between pve and pvp as far as stats are concerned to where the gear might be more viable so if you're somebody that's looking for you know a flex role that can do almost all the content in the game the easiest and have big impact then honestly the tank role is going to be really good so if you want to be somebody that just logs on and you don't have a lot of time to find a group uh, for whatever it is that you're doing uh, tank is likely going to be really good and I really wanted to see what prop warrior had to offer with things like mountain thane focusing around spells like thunderclap so I'm very excited to see what prop warrior has to offer here as we look to explore it in this video now for Mountain Thane, Thunderclap uh, is basically going to do AoE damage with Lightning, but it looks like also Revenge and Execute. So they've added more abilities to this uh, outside of Thunderclap, which makes this a lot more viable in terms of Burst. And it's also going to be proccing a lot more during Avatar. So Avatar is going to be an important component for this. Crashing Thunder, Storm Strike, or Nature Damage. Uh, your abilities deal is increased by 5% and they ignore armor. Thunderclap damage is just buffed by 40%. Remember, Prot Warrior has always been about spamming Thunderclap for as long as I can remember. So this is likely going to be really fun. I'm really excited to try this one. Ground Current, Lightning Strikes also deal 30,000 to, uh, to nearby enemies. So just even more AoE damage. Shield Slam damage buffs and Demo Shout damage reductions. This is really good, especially in PvP scenarios. There's PvP talents that make Demo Shout a lower cooldown, which can be really good as a flag carrier or a base defense defender uh, type of deal in PvP, so this is a really strong talent. Um, thunder Blast, Shield Slam, and Bloodthirst have 35% chance to grant you Thunder Blast, stacking up to two times. Uh, your next Thunderclap becomes a Thunder Blast, which deals more damage as Storm Strike and generates Rage. Uh, Storm Bolt. Storm Bolt also hits two nearby enemies, stunning them for two seconds, but its cooldown is increased by 10 seconds, or intervening a target grants them a shield that absorbs magic damage equal to three times your armor. So you already have things like Bodyguard, and you've got Intervene, and this is going to be really good for team utility, maybe protecting a healer, if you see your healer getting focused down uh, and giving that to them, or if you wanted to focus on having more AoE stuns, you're going to have Shockwave coupled now on top with Storm Bolt, so depending on if your group, whether it's PvE or PvP, had a lot of stuns you could opt into going for more stuns uh or i'm going to imagine in pvp situations i don't know how often in pve you're going to be able to intervene um but you know if there's like a big heavy hitting damage over time effect on somebody and you intervene them and it absorbs some of the damage it, it could be really critical there but in pvp i'm imagining the storm shield is gonna be really good uh keep your feet on the ground physical damage taken reduced by two percent thunder blast damage reduces damage you take by eight percent so up to ten percent additional damage reduction uh, or you get five percent stamina victory rush increases your maximum health by ten percent and when this health increase expires you heal for any of the original victory rush that healed you in in excess or of your full health that's a lot of self-sustain um, so depending on like if you were going on a solo mission as a tank, tanks often end up being really broken in world PvP and it's usually mechanics like this where you can kind of like sustain yourself almost indefinitely that enable that. So it probably depends on what your situation is. If you really test your trust your healers to be able to keep you up, the damage reduction is probably going to be more viable, but it's not up at all times, right? It's only when you have the thunder blast proc, whereas you're going to get the 5% at all times and you can use victory rush. I'm assuming this works with the in combat victory rush as well, where you don't have to kill something. Um, but we'll test that out as well. Flashing skies, thunder blast calls down a lightning strike on all enemies hit. I'm curious to see what that looks like. Activating demoralizing shout grants you a charge of thunder blast. Okay, this is a really tough one because demoralizing shout is such a low cooldown in PvP where you could just be like spamming it. But I want to see what the animation looks like. Gathering clouds, your attacks trigger lightning strikes 30% more often, or lightning strikes generate five rage, and you get revenge and execute damage. So this is just going to give you more kind of pad AoE. This is going to give you more power on mostly single target, although revenge will be a little bit of AoE. Um, so again, if you're really trying to like focus people down, I could see this. Just pad the meter with thunderclap, then you're going to want to go with that. So if you want like a lightning proc or a single target focus, you can see the emphasis on this hero talent tree. 
burst of power lightning strikes have a 15 percent chance to make your next two shield slams have no cooldown that's a really big one shield slam is a huge part of the rotation uh, as far as single target avatar of the storm casting avatar grants you two charges of thunder blast and resets the cooldown of thunderclap while avatar is not active lightning strikes have a 10 percent chance to grant you avatar your next thunderclap becomes a thunder blast that deals storm strike damage this is a crazy tree oh my god this tree is way better than the, even though i think the last time i looked at it. this had i mean this looks like a new icon this must have been updated this looks absolutely wild as far as hero talents are concerned. So we're gonna go into ignore pain, get some of our personal defensive cooldowns, like a demo shout, 45 second cooldown. And then there's one here that can reduce it by 15 seconds. So you can get, you know, 30 second cooldown. That's why I'm saying like that synergy here with demo shout, granting you a charge of thunder blast could be really good synergy there. Bodyguard to protect the allies. Now, if you're flag carrying, you're probably not gonna to go towards that one too much. Um, particularly, I think getting Thunderclap root with how often you're going to be spamming this would be really annoying for people to deal with. And then you could also be disruptive on casters with Shield Bash because Shield Slam is going to reduce um, the damage that they do if you can hit them on the cast. So you can train down enemy casters when you know there's a lot of casters. Focus on Shield Bash and just kind of like with this two charge Shield Bash thing um, or just his Shield Slam thing, uh, you're going to be able to connect a lot of damage reduction. Uh, defensive stance additionally reduces more damage. So this is where you're going to like. This is where like playing a tank is going to differentiate in a lot like do you want to focus more on doing damage or survivability because being tankier with the flag could be really important but then in team fight oriented maps you're probably going to drop a lot of these defensive talents so you'll likely have multiple builds in that regard um i'm going to pick mostly the damage talents because i want to do big damage uh devastate thunderclap revenge execute 30 percent chance to reset the marine cooldown uh using shield slam increases the damage of shield slam so you can see like this stacking shield slam mechanic is going to be really good uh 10 of the damage you deal adds to ignore pain or you healed by your dupe wounds now i think we're going to be applying a lot of deep wounds in battleground situations so that's likely going to be really good damage from bleed effects have a chance to Grant you more rage. Uh, we can get rend. We can get instigate. Devastate deals twenty percent increased damage. I don't think this talent tree has changed too much from the retail one, at least from what I've seen here when I looked and copied my action bar over from retail. Uh, it doesn't look like it's too different. Um, just trying to focus in. It's kind of oh, it's a bit annoying that we have to take like a really heavy focus taunt talent, at least in PvP situations. Um, although you can spec to interrupt, you can get an AOE interrupt, so you could be really disruptive. If you decide to go down this route and you get a lot of extra damage with thunderclap so i'm thinking we're probably going to have to go down this side uh whereas on the right side it seems like it's a little bit more focused well if you get if you're finding like caster teams getting spell block could be really good deep wounds and thunderous war damage increased so we probably want i think we want some of the bleed damage increase and we want some of the thunderclap stuff for sure with everything that's going on um, although this has some execute options as well. So when we looked at this, like the difference between execute, the difference between lightning strike, this could also be one that synergizes in that way as well. Um, but we're going to go with the lightning stuff for now. Uh, increase the radius of demo roar. Uh, and each enemy hit by thunderclap reduces the cooldown. That's a really important component. The 30 second cooldown, you can get this thing really low and just have permanent 25% damage reduction on enemies, which is going to be really good. Shield slams generates more rage, extends it, or you gain haste for each enemy or ally within 10 yards of 10% haste. Haze could be really fun, uh, especially with how people are likely going to be next to you at all times. Uh, we do want to get Punish, I believe, on this side, though. So this is the one where Shield Slam does more damage uh, and reduces damage towards you. Just a really nice little single target damage reduction. Impenetrable Wall, Shield Slam generates an additional 3 Rage and reduces the remaining cooldown of Shield Wall. Or Shield Wall gains an additional charge. See, this is, this is where the big gamble for Prot Warrior is going to be, is like... How much tankiness do you want to go for versus how much damage do you want to go for, especially in battleground situations? So, I'm thinking we probably want the haste in PvP situations here. We probably want rend because thunderclap. I believe thunderclap will spread rend, so we we want to be able to just spread our bleeds around as much as possible. Um, now, anger management reducing the cooldown of avatar could be really good as well because of the synergies it's got. Uh, increases strength and armor. We want that extra armor because I think it was a talent over here that it depended on our armor or something like that. Um, and it, it helped benefit somebody else here, whether it was on your team or something like that. I don't know why I can't find it now, but there was definitely something to do with armor. Um, so we definitely want armor. Shield charge is really good, just an extra charge stun. Um, man, there's so many good talents now to actually really think about as far as like trying to get into PvP with this stuff. Hey, stamina and armor, like, oh my god, everything is so crazy for prot. Uh, block chance, block value, do we want to get into Ravager? Now, it could be really good in Battleground, dropping a Ravager down on everybody um, and blade storming them. We, and then we could even get like Storm of Destruction, so we get the extra snare and healing reduction, 50% healing reduction, prot, you know, 
Wait, did they buff this? I don't remember this giving 50% healing reduction. Ravager gives 50%. It's Sharpened Blade. It's a 60% snare and a fit. That's an AOE. I feel like you're going to... That's nuts. That could make you viable over... Like, usually, you know, we've been seeing Demon Hunter tanks just constantly. But you having an AOE Sharpened Blade could actually give you really good team fight potential. Crazy team... Like... Prot Warrior might be back, honestly, when it comes to PvP with that alone. Uh, when an enemy dies uh, while well, affected by your Ravager's duration is extended, and I really want that. Damage is reduced by 30 by two charges. I think you're going to want the two charges. I uh, For sure you're going to want the two charges. Um, because, man, what? This is going to be... This is going to be nuts. You're going to get two charges of this for 50% healing reduction. Um, shield charge deals 20% more damage. Grants you shield block. Makes your revenge cost no rage. That seems really good for damage. Shield charge critical strike chance increased. I, I feel like we want both of those. So this is getting really tough when we're getting down to like the last couple. Like, Would you want like an AOE mass interrupt? Do you want more tankiness? There's a lot of choice here, honestly. Um, or blocking attacks uh, can cause damage back to the target. So if there's a lot of physical attackers with the Thunderclap build that you've got going on. Um, shield wall gains an additional charge. Man, this is too hard. This is too hard. What am I missing not getting down here, though? I swear I must be missing something. Consuming 30 rage uh, causes shield slam thunderclap to deal. Oh, my God. That seems so good. But I have to get two points into this to be able to get that. Oh, my God. That's too good. Oh, and booming voice. There's too many good things, man. There's too many good things. I feel like maybe shield charge... Again, if you're on an FC map and you're trying to kite around, but getting Demo Roar, maybe that 20% is it's only your damage. It's not it's like not like your allies, right? Um, I don't think Battle Scarred Veteran, but maybe. I don't know. I feel like you're going to have to have this Ravager, at least on like non-FC maps with this new Storm and Destruction. You're going to have to. This this is this is really good. Um, but if we're going down this route, maybe we get like some Execute stuff to try and get more damage. Uh, or we just get an extra Shield Wall Charge. Uh, I don't think that that will ever really be bad. Um, we'll just get an extra charge of shield wall. So we have more damage reduction. So a little bit more tanky. Um, and then I don't really know where, what else we would really want to go here. Last two seconds long. We'll probably get the AOE interrupt. Like if we're like in a battleground situation. Okay, then we got we got obviously want to intervene because of the, the shield we get for that. We obviously want Thunderclap. It's a bit weird that they have a build focused around something that you could actually not, not spec into by accident. Um, your auto attacks generate more rage. Obviously, what movement speed? I think getting around in battlegrounds is going to be super important. Leech healing doesn't sound too bad. Pain and gain, I think, got nerfed recently, but it's probably still pretty decent. Thundercap radius increased. Uh, we definitely want this because we're going to be spamming it. We want the armor. We want the shockwave. We want the AOE shockwave talents that buff it all up. We want to be as disruptive as possible. Uh, cooldown on leap for mobility is going to be super important. Spell reflect for keeping ourselves alive is going to be super important. Uh, cooldown on all of our abilities here by 5%. We got two charges of shield wall, so it's going to be some pretty big value. Shield slam doing more damage seems really good. Uh, we probably want rallying cry. And probably depending on the comp, you'll get better immunity to remove bleeds and things like that. So we'll get pain and gain right now to get down to rally. Double time for more mobility, obviously. Uh, we want strength for armor because we're prot. Uh, we could run spear ravager and prevent people from getting out of it. This seems really fun. I'm not gonna lie. This seems really fun um, Get all the crit damage modifiers here. We get more stamina and durations of CC effects on ourselves Or we can go down for more damage on the thunderous roar. So this is but we want avatar. We need avatar So we kind of have to go down this way um, Do we want to go down for more stamina? Or just more auto attack damage. Avatar increases the damage of Thunderclap and Shockwave and reduces the cooldown. Or activating Avatar and Shield Wall grants you four seconds of the other. Now we do have Shield Wall with two charges. So we could use Shield Wall to get more Lightning Blasts. I'm thinking Unstoppable Force will probably just feel good though. Um, this will be like a spear down. I guess you would, you don't, maybe you don't have to get spear if you wanted to get Thunderous Roar. Because we picked a lot of bleed oriented stuff as well. Not getting Thunderous Roar kind of feels bad, but maybe it's not that big of a deal. Critical Strike Chance, Critical Strike Damage of Execute, uh, Auto Attacks, Revenge is 25% more, but costs more Rage. Uh, wrecking Throw to Break Down Shield, to Shattering Throw to be Disruptive. So it probably depends on, like what again, what specs you're fighting, how disruptive you want to be versus how much damage you want to be. I think Second Wind is going to be important, though. Uh, we'll get Second Wind for sure. Uh, we could also get Fear Not Breaking on Damage, which I'm sure would be really annoying for anyone in a Battleground situation. Okay, I need to see what this looks like because I'm actually thinking Prot Warrior might be back. I legitimately think Prot Warrior 
might be back with this build now uh, with everything that they've been adding in with this and so we're just gonna charge in here i want to see what this avatar looks like avatar we grow a little bit lightning spam up the thunder blast get a nice little lightning strike going on we got really reduced cooldown we'd be rooting up enemies with this as well we gotta get spear of bastion I, i've never played spear as prot this is making me think of like the abilities in a completely different way so we could drop a spear down Drop down our Ravager in it. No one can escape the spear. Ravager stacking up an AoE Mortal Wounds effect on everybody. We got two charges of it. We're generating tons of rage. We're just thunderclap rooting and annoying everybody. We can AoE Shockwave everybody. They did a lot to improve Prot's viability, I feel like, in a PvP situation, especially on a non-FC map. Um, I think on an FC map, you might still fall behind, but there's no guarantee that you would ever get one, right? You might almost always get... Um, Something that maybe like a Rathy Basin instead. And in that situation, I feel like you're actually the best tank. Like, uh, if you. What tank has Siphine? AoE Siphine, bro. I don't think any tank has AoE Siphine. Now, it does become a bit redundant if you're also playing with other warriors, you know, because they have that effect. So you, you might be at the mercy a bit of RNG when that all comes through. But the rotation feels smooth. I like the animations of the Thunderclap. Uh, and the the synergies of it that are in the build what you're trying to go for here cooldowns are pretty long though on ravager So not having like anger management work on ravager is a little bit sad I think it only works really on avatar and probably shield wall or something like that um, So it does feel like after you've used those cooldowns that your momentum is going to slow down at least a little bit um, if for, As far as getting pressure it'd be cool if they added ravager to anger management for prot or something like that um, maybe they're worried about it becoming too strong, but the avatar cooldown reduction makes me feel like I'm getting avatar really frequently I just keep spamming out thunderclaps whenever I want and this, These will be rooting people. They'll be staring people They'll be spreading your rend around onto multiple targets and giving you a lot of extra damage We got our spear combo with our ravager So we'd spear somebody ravager them stack them all together and then just absolutely blast If you had like a death knight on your team to grip enemies together and you spear ravager combo them there's no way they're surviving that. There's no way. And then Booming Voice also, 30-second cooldown Demo Roar on the whole team. They're probably going to have, like, close to no CD. As you can see, my Thunderclap took, like, maybe 10 seconds off the cooldown of it is what it looked like there for a second. It's already at 12 seconds on a 30-second CD. It's like, this seems really fun. This seems really fun. This seems like Prod is likely making a big comeback, comeback at least for PvP. PvE, it's a bit harder for me to speak directly to. Um, but in PvP, this looks like it would be a lot of fun. A lot more than it has been in the past. I feel like Prod has just been totally forgotten. Now, we still do have the Colossus. Um, it's going to probably play very similarly with Demolish. Now, but the, the other advantage of Demolish is it makes you immune to CC. So when you think you're going to get, like, smoke bombed or something, you can make, like, an outplay that you didn't have before um, with you being able to use this to go immune to CC and then be able to jump away to safety with something like a Heroic Leap. So it could add a little bit more outplay potential there. Also give you a lot more of a heavy-hitting attack. You get a lot more crit damage modifiers, it looks like here. Um, and you can just stack these up with Shield Slam. It's a lot more single target focus potentially, but you also get the Shockwave Stun, direct, stun Duration Increase uh, as well as a Snare. Uh, or you can get a knockup if your team has a lot of stuns. You could get an AoE knockup instead, uh, which is again good for Mythic Plus. Um, if you've already got a lot of AoE stuns, you get an AoE knockup. You're gonna have more synergies there. Mythic Plus, Shockwave Revenge, Whirlwind, deal more damage. Or Colossus might extend the damage of increases the damage. Of, so you want to go bleed focus more uh, or burst focus more. You'd have an option there. Colossal might increase the damage of your revenge by 5% per stack. And total damage prevented by ignore pain or double second wind, which could be really good. Shield Slam Revenge, more damage. Uh, Shield Slam Critical Strike grants Colossus Might, and you deal 5% more damage and take 2% less. You, you're going to be a little bit bigger as well. Colossus Might now stacks up to 10, so we're going to be able to get a fat demolish. Now, obviously, this is going to add like a, an extra cooldown into your window, um, but I think it's going to be worth it. I think, let's see, I really want to see how hard this thing can hit for, honestly. So we're going to try and get our stacks going. I've already forgotten how to get our stacks as prot, to be honest, but I think it's from Shield Slam. Okay, it's from Shield Slam. So we're going to mash the crap out of Shield Slam to get these stacks going so that our Demolisher is increased. But it's also increasing the damage of our Revenge um, in the middle of that. And I think our DPS on that last build was around like 500k. So the DPS without using Demolish yet is coming pretty close. And I'm not even using like all of my cooldowns either. Um, like... Uh, the Spear of Bastion and the Ravager combo. So as soon as we get to 10 stacks, we'll drop a Spear of Bastion Ravager Demolisher combo with an extended Shockwave duration. So this is going to be extended Shockwave into Spear of Bastion, into Ravager, into huge Demolish. It's hitting for about like, what was that, 1 mil or something like that on the end of it, I think? 1 mil on the top end? I mean, being able to hit for a mil as a tank is pretty decent as far as Burst is concerned. And you still got that AoE Mortal Wounds effect that's being applied to every target. 
you still got anger management reducing the avatar cooldown. It's got that big hit moment, so it's a little bit less frequent damage. Um, so, but if you're fighting a lot of casters, I could see demolish being better because obviously thunderclap's not going to hit a lot of targets when there's a lot of spell casters on a team. Um, whereas if you're fighting a lot of melee, then you're going to be able to thunderclap root them, disrupt them. So these builds probably depend a lot on like what you're fighting against specifically. But the CC immunity is also something that's important to take into account. When he's demolished there, bump my damage up quite a lot. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not running a Thunderous Roar build either. This one focuses a little bit more around bleed damage. So those talents might be a bit more competitive. This is more so just me experimenting with feel. Things are still subject to change as far as tuning. Um, and what are like core mechanics that regardless of tuning are likely gonna make a class powerful. Uh, and I'm thinking that probably, this is probably the best prop where he's ever been or gonna have. Uh, regardless of build you got like a lot of customizable options here as far as like burst damage cc avoidance just a overall aoe damage uh which sides you want to lean into how much personal defense versus damage how much disruption versus personal defense versus damage i think this is a really well done spec uh, just across the game as a whole i think it's a really well done spec and it likely stands a good chance of being very strong so i hope you guys enjoyed this deep dive of the prop warrior if you did make sure to hit the subscribe button comments down below what are your thoughts for the prop warrior what tanks are looking exciting for you and i will see you in the next one